the, the guard duty for the bridge and can open and close the bridge whenever one of the other boats have to come in, and in or out. So uh, since the 1960s, this area has become more of a touristic uh, area of Copenhagen and a more decent neighborhood than it used to. As you will see, I'm not a politician. I mean what I say. Yeah. So um, maybe some of you have noticed already that on these boats we have a tradition of waving to people that we pass on the way. There's a saying in Denmark that a stranger is a friend that you just haven't met yet. So uh, we try to greet all of our new friends that we pass uh, from, the, from the boat. Uh, most, in most cases, people wave back to us. So uh, we think it's uh, the question. <laughs> so um, on your right-hand side over here, you see the Opera House of Copenhagen. It was built in 2005 and given as a gift for Copenhagen from Mersk, the shipping company in Denmark, so they could afford to throw Copenhagen this fancy new Opera House. It's designed by an architect called Henning Larsen, an impressive building of 14 stories, five of those below sea level. It consists of an outer shell made of glass and steel and an inner shell made of maple wood, lacquered like string instruments and shaped like a heart to symbolize the love for music. Shaped building with smoke coming out of the chimney. It's called Coburn Hill. It was built six years ago by Bjarke Engels, probably the most successful Danish architect at the moment. On the inside Coburn Hill here is a waste to energy plant. They burn a lot of garbage and produce heat and electricity for most of the households in Copenhagen. But the fun part of the building is the outside of it. On one side it features a climbing wall going all the way up to the top. Uh, on top of the building there's a cafe and a hiking trail. And then all the way down the side of the building there is a ski slope where you can... Danes used to be so terribly jealous at our brother people in Norway and Sweden because they have nice mountains and snow, good skiing, flat little Denmark, not much of that. But now our favorite architect tried to compensate us for that by giving us our own little ski slope in Copenhagen. So um, next here on your right hand side you see Holmen. Holmen has been home to the Danish uh, Navy for at least more than 300 years. Nowadays we mostly see museum ships here at Holmen. The active part of the Navy fleet is now out that one of the summer houses that had been wiped off the face of the earth belonged to the mother-in-law of the captain who fired the missile. So we are using this yacht uh, for their summer cruises around Denmark and up to the Faroe Islands and Greenland. Now uh, if you look ahead in the direction we are sailing, you will see a green area with cannons on. It's called Battery Sixtus, named after King Christian VI, who established this function as a part of the defense of the city. Most of the cannons here are old and no longer in service, but there are some small grey cannons among them. Those are signal cannons, and they are still fired twice a day, at sunrise and at sunset, to tell the ships in the harbor when to raise and lower their flags. There's one little problem with that tradition. As you might have noticed, the sun tends to rise a bit early during the summer in Denmark, and uh, some of the neighbors in the area were getting quite up here in the northern end of the harbor. The inner harbor is very clean today. You'll see people swimming and doing water sports all over the place. And we also have some wildlife in the harbor that we like to protect. So the big cruise ships and other big industrial ships these days, they have to stay up here in the northern end where the circulation is better and where they don't disturb so much. And next, we'll be visiting the most photographed lady in Copenhagen. I'm sure you have heard about her. As her title suggests, she's not very big. And this is not the US, we're a tiny nation and we make tiny, tiny statues. Uh, but we are very fond of our little mermaid, despite her humble size. She's been sitting here in the harbor since 1913, and there's a funny little story to how she came about. It was the owner back for revenge. It could not have been her, but it's a nice theory though. But the, the little mermaid here, she's also had adventures in her life. Uh, back in 2010, she actually went on a nice little business trip to Shanghai to represent Denmark at the World Expo there. So while she was away in Shanghai, the tourists who came here during that period were a bit disappointed that she was not at home. So they tried to compensate for that by putting up a screen where she normally sits, and then they were live streaming from Shanghai. Yeah, brilliant idea. 
except when the tourists came here, it was night in Shanghai. So they would see a live streaming of a statue sitting all alone in a tent in the middle of the night with absolutely nothing going on. Super exciting live streaming that was. Yeah. The small pavilions over here on your right hand side, the ones with the green roofs, the, those are the royal pavilions. Our royal family and their guests are waiting here when they need to board the royal yacht to go on a cruise. If you happen to be a royal person, a queen or a prince or something, you can wait in the what with a crown on top. If you're just a common, ordinary person like most in colonization of the world and even in trading with enslaved people. The part of the city in here is called the Frederikstad. It has some stately mansions and broad boulevards, very impressive. Uh, but those uh, buildings and boulevards were built mostly for money that was made from exploiting those Danish colonies and trading with enslaved people. When realizing that, maybe it's a little less impressive. In the three warehouses up here by the waterfront, they stored products from those Danish colonies. In the first one, products from the West Indies in Caribbean. They are now known as the Virgin Islands. They were sold to the US. In the second one, they stored products from Greenland. And in the third one, products from Ghana in West Africa. Uh, the colonizers called can all help each other create a better future. Next here, on your right hand, wife Mary and their four kids. Behind the palace, you can see the dome of the marble church. It took a hundred corner code. I'm told that if you scan that QR code, you're sent straight to the sales department. So if you feel like shopping for a little bachelor stay here in Copenhagen while you're here, I suggest you do that. Uh, I passed on the offer. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not. Uh, next, we are heading towards uh, Christiantown, a part of Copenhagen uh, that has recently celebrated its 400 years anniversary. Um, Christiansand was commissioned by King Christian IV, uh, the most famous king in Danish history. He was famous for several reasons. He was the longest reigning king from 1588 to 1648. He was only 11 years old when he was crowned as king and he reigned for almost 60 years. See that there's a crack between two of the circles? Uh, that's because this is one of those bridges that have, has a weird opening mechanism. A uh, part of the bridge over here can slide up to the side to allow the sailing ships to come into the canal. In front of us here, we have the Black Diamond, an addition to the Royal Library that was built in 1999. It didn't work, those docks never came, uh, but that's why uh, Christianshavn here looks like Amsterdam. Like in the real Amsterdam, people here live very close to the water, some even on the water on houseboats, uh, so it's a, a quiet zone. I will not be using the microphone to respect the peace of the residents here. But I'll come through the boat. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And please enjoy our little copy of Amsterdam. Thank you. So, after the next bridge here, you'll have a nice view of the Church of Our Savior up on your left hand side. Uh, there's a nice photo shot of the church right on the other side of the bridge, but you only have a couple of seconds to catch it, so have your cameras ready. 